afternoon painters and decorators of the interweb this is Phil Beckwith the professional painter and decorator back with you yeah back with you again oh, you're gonna love it I'm going to tell you how to spray or how to approach spraying a staircase when it's been a wood finish pine strip pine whatever you want to call it let's bring you in look like this and bringing it up to a, a white solid painted finish so if you want to know how to do that let's have an ad break let's have a bit of a 15 seconds from me and then we'll come back and we'll talk you through it see you in a few seconds Right, I've done my little intro there, um, give you a bit of a breather, you could go off and make a drink, get some chocolate out, sit and enjoy the next um, 45 minutes of me talking about how to spray a staircase up. Now let's not hope it's going to be 45 minutes. Right, let's get on to this so we're not making it a long winded um, process. Right, I'm going to be spraying this staircase, let's get back so you can see it. I'm going to spray this staircase, I'm going to do the treads and the risers. So you're going to say, what's the treads and the risers? Well, there's the riser. Let's get my finger. Riser. And then the treads are there. Now there's going to be a carpet runner up the middle. So what I've got to do, I've got to bring these across with a paint finish. And also bring in these spindles. You've got your stringing either side. You've got your panelling. That's going to be um, another, well, that'll be another day. So handrail is going to be taken in as well, the null posts and the null caps, and it's the same upstairs. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get, it's all been cleaned down, we've sanded it with the mercury on the treads and the risers, they've all been sanded, done hand sanding on these with, you know, I quite like that, mercury, is it, that gold flex, I can flex it round, this is a used piece, I didn't want anything too coarse, just sanding it down, gave it a nib down, got rid of any overspray um, that's just fell out, fall out from spraying the ceilings. So we've cleaned it all down, dusted it all off, and the idea is we're going to give it a coat of bin. That's Zinza bin. Now bin is the red tin. That's shellac based. Now shellac based will stop the knots coming through. It's also an adhesion primer. So any of the knots that you can see, you just see there. Any of the knots will be protected, like going around with shellac knotting. It also acts as a good base for me bringing up Helmi undercoat and then finishing with Everal Aqua. Now you're going to say, why aren't you using Everal Aqua undercoat? Well, the reason I'm not using Everal Aqua undercoat is because Ticarilla can't supply me Everal Aqua undercoat because the supply chain issues we've got at the moment. But Ticarilla. Helmi undercoat is fine and it works hand in glove also with Everal Aqua finish. So that's what we'll do. Now, I've told you before, a lot of people make the mistake is they'd be going around filling all this. Now, only fill up when you've got a primer coat on or it's already painted. While it's like this, get your primer coat on first. That'll show up anywhere that needs proper filling, masticking, I corking, and do it after. Never do any filling on bare wood or bare MDF because the moisture of your fillers, your stoppers, your corks gets soaked into that surface, dries it out too quick and that filler, stopper, cork can suddenly start springing away and breaking and uh, going brittle. So if you get your primer coat on first, that evens out the porosity, that's a good word for a Wednesday morning, evens out the, or Wednesday afternoon I should say, um, evens out the porosity of the surface then you work on that. Once you've got your fillers on, then you can rub it down and then you can build it up with your undercoats. Now, this will have a bin coat, fill, prime, all done, and then we'll go to undercoats. Depending on its, how it's covering, I'll probably do two coats of undercoat and then two coats of finish and really build it up. But again, not until I start spraying it, I'll know how it's covering and how it's building up. But this is a straightforward staircase. 
you'll probably say it's not straightforward. I'm going to use my HVLP because I've got more control over the fan pattern. I've got also more control over how much paint I apply on the surface. I could use my airless, but that would be a fixed fan, either a 108, which will give me a two inch fan with a 08 orifice. That's the whole size, the smaller the number, the bigger the, I don't want to do airless. I want to have more control and use my HVLP. So I've put a 1.5 needle needle set into the sprayer. I've got a remote pot and I'm going to show you in a minute. And what I can do is regulate my fan pattern all on the gun. And if I need to put a little bit more paint on, I can regulate it by dialing it in or out to put more on or less. So do you follow? Straightforward. Only if you know the answer, isn't it? It's one of those questions, only if you know the answer. Now, as you're looking, I've got bare MDF. That will get primed in first. And then any bits of the gaps underneath will cork. Any of the nail heads, we'll just put some bit of a stopper, some filler in those. Once that's all done, we'll give it a nib down carefully. Then we'll build it up again. We don't, like, we don't need to be rubbing the life out of anything. We don't need to be rubbing these spindles back down to literally bare wood because these have had a, a coat on over the years. It might be just a varnish. We don't want to be rubbing that out because what happens is this sort of wood, it starts, you heard of tanning, staining. Once you start breaking off that varnish, it can start tanning and staining. Now the bin will stop that. You could use cover stain as well, zins a cover stain. Let's get you on focus on me. Yeah, you could use cover stain, but bin's a good one because it'll also get rid of these knots as well, stop those knots coming through. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show me, oh, I can't even say it, I'm going to show me spray set up and then we'll um, crack on with it. I'll do a bit of spray and then I'll come back to you and show what I've sprayed because I don't want to bore you with showing me how to spray, spraying, spraying. But again, just be careful, just control your fan pattern, control your paint. I'm just going to show you up here, look. I've got no walls that are finished at the moment, there's only ceiling. So anything that's a ceiling, like this bottom edge there, I'm just going to put a piece of card just to protect me. If there is a bit of overspray, I can just touch it up because you won't see it, but I'm not expecting to see much overspray on there. Now, the only, the only other little issue of an area is these, I'm trying to get the back of these. Trade secret. Get what you can with your sprayer for your first coat with your primer and then anything that you can't get with your sprayer. If you've got a radiator, rad roller, like little, what is it, four inch roller, short pile, get your rad roller in there, get the areas you can't get or get a brush, get the areas you can't get with your sprayer and get it there and then build it up again with your spray. Any areas that you can't get, finish off with a brush. Your final spray, don't go back with a brush, just do it with a final spray. But that is where you'll just have to get a roller at the back of it. So are we straightforward? Right, I'm just going to give you five while I just move downstairs. So I'll go like that. And I've done that and I'm coming back with you. So just the quick brief, just briefly to show you what I've got. We've done videos. I'll do you a link in that corner there for how to set up an airless, uh, airless, I'm using HVLP. I'll do you a link there for setting up a HVLP and it's a QT5, so it's a stage five HVLP. I've got it all connected up to a remote pot. You see that there? Let's flip you over. Let's get you there. Got you on the remote pot there, which gives me full control over the movement of a sprayer. So there's a remote pot. That's probably got a couple of litres of Zinza bin in at the moment. The hose from the HVLP turbine goes on there. And then I can move that around as I like. And there's the gun. And as you can see, get that. I've got a 1.5 needle set set up on there. So, um, Jobs are good and I don't think I need to explain anything else to you. What I'll do, I'll do a bit of spraying. Once I've sprayed it, I'll come back, show you where I am with the spraying because I don't want to bore you with spraying. And then we'll um, explain how it's all working out and being done. So um, thanks for listening. I'll put my hand over the lens now and that'll finish you off for the next section.
you've seen a bit of me spraying doing all those spindles I'd probably say just over an hour if that all I've got to do now is bring the stair treads the risers and stair treads down which are just there so I'm going to put you on a tripod show you a little bit of spraying of that but is it like watching paint dry quite possibly but you can get the idea once you start building up with that primer you can start seeing where any filling needs doing and stuff like that so um, I'll stop you there we'll go downstairs I'll put you on a tripod and I'll start bringing down the treads and the risers paint those all in, all in. so see you in a minute saw me painting these treads and risers once once you lost me I turned it off and I finished it all off because it was off camera now this is the bin shellac base spirit base dries goes off within about 10-15 minutes you can recoat after a couple of hours so I'm gonna wait once it's all um, dried off I'm gonna get a coat of undercoat now what you've got to be mindful of when you're spraying you've got fallout you've got a bit of dust now for the purpose of the video and for showing you how to do it I started low down and worked my way up ideally start at the top and work down because if there is any dust fallout onto what you're going to be working on you can dust it off as you go along instead of what you've done actually gets dust over it now the beauty of using HVLP I don't know whether you saw on some of the video shots if you half trigger it no paint comes out but air comes out that's what you can't do with an airless sprayer because as soon as you pull that trigger paint comes out with HVLP half trigger it let some air out and then particularly on these areas here where there might be a little bit of dust that I couldn't get off with a duster brush you can blow the dust out before you start putting the paint on so sometimes you saw me uh, let's call it wafting wafting with the sprayer with the spray gun and it's because I got half trigger I was letting the air come through the air cap to dust it all off and then I could actually spray without the thought of oh it's all covered in dust because I'd already dusted it off but that's that's what you can do with an HVLP gun you can't with a airless so all this area here I have the stuff that's dried I've just gone with my fine sanding pads and I've just nibbed them down now I've told you fill up once you've got your primer cork up fill up stop up once your primer's on now because I'm not going to get all this done in a day I can afford to actually wait for this to dry and then come back and put my undercoat on which will give me Helmy undercoat now the Helmy undercoat's knocked off to an off-white colour because this is going to be like an off-white colour anyway to match the panelling and the dados and the woodwork so I'll knock it off I'll get it all coated up so it covers nicely that shows me any pin holes can you see where you've got nail holes and then once all that's dry tomorrow I can go around just filling up fill up neatly you don't want loads of sanding down cork up once that's dried then you can start either if you need another undercoat give it another undercoat but my idea is now it's had the primer on and that's covered really well I can give it a decent undercoat I'll still stick with the 1.5 needle if I change that I'll let you know but I'll stick with the 1.5 because it won't put too much paint on I can regulate the paint from the the needle adjustment at the end of the gun so I'll do that I'll give it all a coat of decent coat of Helmy once that's all dried then we can fill up and then we can look at whether it needs another coat or not but it won't do because what I want to do is put two coats of finish on 
that's all I need to do and then it'll be lovely and the finish is Everall Aqua 40 so there's a bit of a sheen to it and it's, uh, it's I've done it before I've done this sort of thing before it's not um, it's not my first rodeo I'm not saying that I'm a rodeo and cowboys are at rodeos but you know you know the saying done this before so I know it'll look good all these gaps here there will all be corked I use a flexible interior exterior cork now I'm currently using the Red Devil um, cork in the white tube that can be used interior exterior I find it has a good flexibility that when I do want to spray over it it doesn't craze or crack so that's the Red Devil cork um, stroke mastic that depending on what you call it well that's the Red Devil brand um, like the one time filler but it's not a filler it's a cork it's not filler it's cork so from this bit of a talkie I'll say I'll get all the paint set up get it all mixed up get it back into the HVLP make sure it sprays nice as you can see with the HVLP oh, workers you can alter the fan pattern so when you're doing wider stair treads you can open it out more when you come to these spindles these are the spindles and the handrail you can narrow it off now if you find that narrowing it off puts too much paint on because it's concentrating it through a smaller area then you can adjust the spray paint flow on the back of the gun and that's how you do it so the talkie talkie is done now I'm going to say while you're just listening to me comments thumbs up smash the like button all the usual um, but I'll get my paint set up and I'll come back to you when I've got some more um, spraying done but you can see where we're going with this you can see how it's done you can see how I sprayed it because I've got some videos of me spraying it's the same principle from the first coat second coat third coat fourth coat you're still spraying it the same nibbing down between um, coats filling up after you've got your primer now I've got my primer on but I'm going to put an undercoat on before I fill up I have nibbed down and I'll be nibbing down between coats and just the more you do it the more you get into it you'll know what works for you and that's the secret do what's right for you but I will emphasize make sure you fill up once you've got your first coat on because a lot of people on TikTok a lot of people on Instagram even on YouTube I'm seeing people filling up before they've got a primer coat on now if you've been to college if you've been taught properly had proper training that isn't something you do make sure you got some primer paint on first onto bare surfaces same with bare plaster walls never knew never do any filling up until you've got a wash coat on i'll leave it at that tip of the day see you later so here we are we've come to the end of um, this session on spraying using an hvlp on a staircase now i was talking to you about getting your primer coat on um, getting it filled up and what I said I was going to get that bin coat on then a coat of Helmi undercoat which I've done and if you can just see there top to bottom I've done Helmi undercoat all over now I'm going to leave that for today I'm going to come back tomorrow when it's all dried off what I'll do is then go around stopping up corking masticking however you want to explain about filling up on woodwork I'll go around with that now the cork that I use I mentioned about the um, Red Devil that dries pretty quick that's probably gone off within about 20 minutes so any of the joints I'll go around with the cork by the time I've gone from top to bottom and gone around with my stopper stroke filler which is also a quick drying furniture filler by the time that's all been done top to bottom I'll be ready for spraying so tomorrow with a quick nib down just to get rid of any residue dust that's in the air that's settled on anything I'll be able to nib it down dust it off and coat it up two coats of finish because I don't really you can see this I'll zoom in just over my shoulder to see if I can focus that has actually covered lovely and to say it was that stripped pine with a coat of varnish on it it wasn't brilliant was it it was a bit yellowy you know how it goes a bit of a warm varnish colour this don't you think don't you think it's made it a lot more modern so we've got two coats on there I don't want to bore you making this into a 40 minute video showing you two lot two more coats of um, Everall Aqua 40 going on it so I'm going to explain to you this will all be stopped up nib down and I'll be doing the same process tomorrow giving it two coats of finish on the camera you're gonna you're not going to notice any, any difference than what it is now because 
I've knocked off, and when I mean knocked off, it's white helmet, I've put a little bit of a, a universal stainer, it's not universal stainer, it's more a colour we've had in another helmet undercoat that is darker, a dob into it, it makes it go a bit creamy coloured and off-white, and that's what I've used to make it an off-white. It's nearly the colour, the James's white, it's like a James's white in Baron Ball. It's as good as nearly the top coat, so you won't notice any difference if I did another video on two coats of top coat. So I'm not going to bore you with that. I can bore you on other things, can't I? So where we are, I'm gonna, just going to say that is just drying nicely. I've done the stair treads, you can just see there um, going down. I don't know whether you can. So tomorrow that will be two coat finished after I've done the stopping up and nibbing down. But I know some people want to know about how to wash out your HVLP. So I'm going to stop now, I'm going to go downstairs, I'm going to get all the kit set up for cleaning out and I'll give you a five minutes um, guide on how to clean HVLP out. Unfortunately I didn't show you cleaning the HVLP out when it had the bin in it. And don't forget bin, shellac based, the bin needs to be thinned, stroke, cleaned out with methylated spirit or if you want to be really posh denatured alcohol now when I have a tipple of the denatured alcohol stroke meths at night I always like it out the fridge I don't like drinking meths when it's warm it's got to be out the fridge to me denatured alcohol whoa I can't go wrong with that can you well if you're stupid enough to believe me that I drink meths well I think you ought to go watch some other videos of something else but no the meths is your thinner stroke cleaner for bin shellac based products all i did with that was to swill out the pot you know the remote pot clean it all out dry it all out put some more shellac um, thinner meths into it chuck it all about and then blasted it through the machine all the way through the paint pipe the meths eats into that um, shellac based thinning it down cleaning it out the pipes and i probably did it in about 400 ml of um, meths so it's not hard to do take out your needle clean that again wipe it with meths clean the air cap clean the um, orifice all around there meths meths is your thinner and your cleaner when you put your needle back in because obviously I was moving back into water-based paint I just wipe it with some needle uh, needle oil or Vaseline because you know why I put thread on my threads put Vaseline on so that's how you clean it up, but I'm going to show you how I we'll wash out all this kit with water. So, see you in a what, few seconds and we'll move downstairs. There you go, you can see that I've done all the treads and risers, top to bottom. And the little black spots, you can just probably see on the video you make out, that's where the filling is going to be needed tomorrow. So that's where we are with it. Let's just have a pan round to the main spindles. You can see that, that's actually, you can't beat a flat finish on things like this. And flat finishes like Helmi 10, anything below a 10, like a proper eggshell finish. This is obviously undercoat. So, I mean, that looks a flat finish. And ideally, that would be a lovely finish because it doesn't show any imperfections up where you've got knots in wood there and a bit of shaping of the wood. It does high doesn't um, highlight it like a, a satin and a gloss does but you can see where I am and you're going to ask me Phil why have you sprayed the staircase before you finish the panelling panelling at the side well I knew there was going to be a bit of stroke overspray because when you, it's not so much overspray with the HVLP it's more of a case that when you're spraying these spindles where your paint's not hitting it obviously goes beyond it and I'll call that the overspray it's where your paint misses and it goes beyond that just circulates in the air and it could go over things I didn't want that um, going over finished woodwork so that's why I've done the staircase as I as as I have done if I can get my words out the other thing I want to just make a point of is I've used the HVLP because I can control that fan pattern a lot easier than doing it with an airless if I was using an airless I'd probably using a oh, I don't know 108 maybe a two I'll probably stick with a 108 or a 110 that would give me a, a two inch fan pattern well I could do these spindles fine with that but where I want to have it a little bit wider on that staircase end that stringing part I wanted something a bit wider where I could control it so that's why I've used my HVLP I could control it I could dial in the width 
wider or narrower with the HVLP, which you can't do using airless. There's nothing wrong with using airless. If you can control it and you can do it, that's brilliant. But HVLP, it's a nicer, finer finish. You can't really see it. It's not doing it justice. It's a finer finish and I've got control over it. That's why I've done it. So, um, yeah, let's crack on showing you how to um, clean it out. So, see you in a second. You are everybody. Can you see me? Yes, you can see me. You probably won't see my face when I'm talking you through um, washing out the kit. So I've got the remote part just there. My gun's there. My machine's not turned on at the minute, but I'm going to explain to you. A remote part is pressurised. You can see me. My remote part's pressurised. So now the pressure's off because the, the turbine's not going. You've got to take the air out of this part before you remove it. So there's a little dial on there and you'll listen, it'll release the air out of it. There you go, once the air pressure is taken out of that pot, I can unscrew it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to release the air pipe off so I'm not, oh, I see that release, it's only a quick release. Take that off there and I'm mobile. Now, that's nearly a three litre tub of Helmi. I used half of that in there, so a good two, two and a bit litres. I'm going to tip that back into there. So now the pressure's released off there, just check, yeah. I can unscrew that. Now this is where putting your Vaseline around your threads really helps. So I'm going to take that off. That, I don't know you can see, is nearly half full. So I've done quite well spreading that staircase. Right, so I'll put that down so I don't spill it. Just shake that paint off there. I've got a slot bucket, and I'm just gonna rest that on the edge. Put that there, you can see. Just resting that there. Now, the paint I've got in there, the paint I've got in there, I'm gonna tip in with my other undercoat. Now that will be thinned by this paint going in. So just tip it all out. This is self-explanatory, tipping it out. I've got my brush that I use wiping now. I'm just wiping it out, getting all the paint out and tipping it into there. Once that's all out, what I suggest you do, and what I'm gonna do, is wash it out. So there's no paint in it. So I've got all the paint out best I can. I'm going to take this now and wash it out. So I'll see you in a minute, I'll wash that out and then I'll come back. Right, I've washed that out with some warm water and with it being water based, Helm is water based, it just washed out dead easy. Now I've washed that pot out and I've filled it up with warm water because that's the water I'm going to use to flush out the paint in the pipe of the gun. So before I put that in there, I'm just going to wipe that off so there's not going to be too much old paint just around it. Now that will all get washed off when it goes in there. So I tell you what, let's just move me how I out the So that's done with. Don't forget when you come to use that again, mix it together. Now I'll be using that again, so being thinned down will be quite nice for spraying again. So let's get that out of the way. Bring this back into play. I've just wiped off that. You're going to see this paint in there, which we're going to flush out. So get that back in there. Screw it all together. Yeah, I spilt it, that's there. Now my slot bucket is ready. I'm just going to shake that because then that, the lid is getting washed. Right, we're going to connect that up to there. All good. And while I've got it like this, I've got a bucket of clean cold water, well, 
it's not that cold, it's still warm. I'm just going to strip, I'm going to take out the needle. Now this is the same principle if you were using bin. And I told you, you're thinner for bin and cleaning out, it's methylated spirit. These are the meth bottles. I've not used five, 500 mils of that to clean it out. Right, let's just get the needle out. There you go. Pull that out. Now, wipe that with a cloth and some water. Clean it down. If you've got a little scouring pad, and there's a bit of paint on it, you can scour it down. I think there still might be a little bit of bin stuck to that. So what I'm going to do is... Get a, I think I've got a bit of sponge on the back of my um, sanding pad. Bit of mess. The mess is on there. I'm just going to wipe that needle. Get any last bit of bin that might have been stuck on it. That's clean now. Go back to my cloth, clean that. I've got a bit of Vaseline. I'm just going to pour a bit of Vaseline on that needle. Now that will go back into the gun. Put the spring on. At least we know the needle's clean, ready for flushing water through. And we'll do that process again when we've finished at the end. Put the air cap back on. Oh, dropped it. Swirl there. Got mess on. So what I'm going to do now, it's going to get noisy. I'm going to turn the turbine on. Where I've been regulating the air pressure on the end there, can you see that? For reducing the air pressure down for spraying. What I'm going to do, I'm going to open it all the way up so all the air comes through now. And we're going to clean this gun up. Get all, I'm going to get all the paint out of that pipe there. So get ready for the noise. So there you go, I've stopped the video because it was just flushing water through. Once you've flushed that remote pot full of water all the way through, you know it's cleaned out because that hose, you can see the clear water going through it and also coming out the end of the gun when you regulate your pressure, uh, your paint flow, you can see it, it's coming out clean. So that, just make sure your pressure's off there, open that up, any last drinks of water, that's all clean, that pipe's clean. What I'll do, I'll just put a smear of Vaseline on that shaft there, just so it doesn't rust up. It's not enough to affect any paint that I'm gonna put in it tomorrow. And I'm going to do the same round the threads on there. A bit of Vaseline, dust there, so if any paint gets stuck, it's not gonna stick it all together. So that's where we are with that. that is now clean and done and that's probably taken me minutes so let's get that away let's disconnect me and let's just show you the gun because I'm going to do the same with the gun now I'm just going to disconnect the gun I'm going to get uh, my tool kit disconnect the paint hose and all you do that bucket of clean, warm water. I'm just going to drop that in there. I've got a, a brush cleaning kit, can you see that? It's got some needles and bits and pieces. Pipe cleaners and things like that. While that's soaking in the water, I'm going to get the cloth, wipe off any of the water-based paint that's stuck to it, undoing the air cap on the end, it's got a bit of paint on it, let that soak. Wipe the orifice on the end, clean that all up, make sure there's no paint around it. Get your brush around it, scrub, 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 that's nice. Remove that orifice needle tip, whatever you want to call it, that's the 1.5, I'm getting that out. 
run my cloth around it, make sure there's no paint stuck to it. If you do find you've got a bit of paint stuck to it, methylated spirits is also another one that softens up water-based paint. That's good. All the way around. Blow through it, check it. If it looks a bit clogged, this cleaner's in there to use that, that's fine. Right, let's just take that needle out. Don't lose the spring. You still see me, don't lose the spring. Pull that back, I can't pull it because my hands are wet. I'll just carefully pull that back. Rinse that all the way through. That comes out, the air cap. Rinse it all the way through. Take that off. Strip it all down, wash it all out. Brushes round it. And off. Brian squeeze by. Say hello Brian. Hello Brian. Brian's been with us since 1966. Not saying anymore. <coughs> so clean that all out. <coughs> Get any last paint off. If you've got a little bit of a scourer, I think I've got one somewhere. Little scourer. Only a plastic one, just get any last bits of paint off that. Gun there, that cleans up. I'll finish that off when we finish the video in, but got all that out. Get the needle, just wipe that scour over there, get any paint off, and that's it. All your bits and pieces there, make sure no paint on them, wipe them round. Check them, make sure you've got nothing sticking to it. Warm, warm water gets all that off. That's all nice and clean. And then all you need to do, put some Vaseline on and just reassemble it. So that's where we are. That's where we are with all of this. Don't forget to put the air rings back on and we're done and dusted. So actually, Cleaning out your HVLP kit, five, ten minutes, dead easy. It's one of the easiest ones to clean out. So on that note, you've seen what I've been doing. I'm going to call it a day. Come back in. Well, so, thanks for listening to me. Give us a like. Give us some comments. Tell me, do you spray staircase with HVLP? stage five or have you got stage three or do you use airless what tips do you use for airless give some comments smash that bell like usual see you on the next one the next one when we do a recap of the whole job you'll see that staircase with two coats of finish so there we go all done and dusted thanks for listening over and out